I'm Michael Hackney, and welcome to Slicer Masterclass. In this episode of Slicer Masterclass, I'm going to show you how you can use the extrusion width setting of your slicer to produce nicer looking and stronger parts. Let's get started by opening a model. So this is a model from one of my 3D printable fly fishing reels, and basically it's a cylinder with a gear-like feature at its base. And it's these narrow teeth that are the problem for this model. Typically, using normal slicing attributes, the slicer was only able to put one perimeter around each of these teeth, and in fact, there's a little void in between them, so the teeth are quite fragile and break off. Now, normally when I design parts like this, I try to take into account the width of my nozzle, the filament width that I'm going to be printing with, how many perimeters I'd like, and other slicing attributes as I'm designing the part. But in this case, I was constrained by the geometry of the part, and I had to basically design the teeth narrow like this. So let's take a look at what this part looks like when it's sliced with normal attributes. Go up here and open the profile settings. And in Kiss Slicer, we have the extrusion width set to 0.4 millimeters, which is usually the same as the diameter of your nozzle. We're printing with three loops, or perimeters, as it's called in other slicers. Um, we're printing with a skin thickness of 0.6 millimeters, and since our layer thickness is 0.2 millimeters, that means that we're printing with three layers of skin, top and bottom. And then we've got an infill extrusion width set down here to be 0.4 millimeters. So pretty basic, standard slicing parameters. Let's slice and see what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to look at the path view. And we're looking now down at the top of the model in the very top layer. So let's scroll down to look at the first layer. And here we see it. And we see that one perimeter around the teeth, and we see that gap here. Let's go to the 3D view. And now you can see this gap a little bit more clearly. So what can we do about this? In one of my Kiss Slicer 1.6 tutorials, and I'll put the link in the upper right-hand corner, I showed how you could use Kiss Slicer's crown feature to actually extrude a little bit of plastic called a crown in each one of these uh, openings, and that would fill in the space and result in stronger teeth. And that's fine and works quite well. The problem is, is that in the process of, of printing each of these little line segments, you have a lot of hopping from tooth to tooth. It's going to print a segment, hop, print the next crown segment, hop, print the next one, hop, print the next one. And so, that can actually create problems with stringing and blobbing, and it also takes a lot of time. The technique I'm going to show you today doesn't use crown, but achieves a similar result, and in fact can create even better uh, results than the crown feature can for geometries like this. And the way we're going to do it is by manipulating the extrusion width. So we see here that we have an extrusion width of 0.4 millimeters, and let's drop that down to 0.38 and slice this part and see what it looks like. Okay, and let's scroll all the way down. So we're looking at the first layer. And now we do see that we're starting to get a little bit more extrusion into this void space in between the two perimeters, but there's still a big gap there. So let's now drop it down to 0.37 and slice again. Scroll down to look at that layer and we're getting even further in, but there is still a little bit of void out here, and that might make these very tip uh, parts of the teeth fragile. So let's try 0.36 and slice. Scroll down, take a look, and this is much better, but there is still a little bit of a gap, and now we see that Kiss Slicer is actually able to put uh, two perimeters around, that's the light blue. Um, let's try just, just for sake of illustration, what would happen with um, a 0.35 millimeter extrusion width? Click Slice and scroll down to see that first layer. 
And now we see that the void has been completely filled in with the second perimeter. And this part is quite strong. In fact, I haven't been able to break these teeth off in normal operation. So there you have it. By manipulating the extrusion width, you can fill in these kinds of small voids, particularly in small features like these teeth. And that results in a much stronger part. It also results in a much nicer looking part. You have to be a little careful though. You can't go too crazy. You're limited to about plus or minus 15% on manipulating the extrusion width in situations like this. The best way to use this technique is to slice your part first with normal slicing parameters. Then take a look at the paths your slicer generates and look for areas where you could see maybe get some improvement. In this case, I had voids in those narrow teeth features. You may have other areas where maybe a larger area is not being infilled as nicely as you'd like. In that case, you could actually increase the extrusion width a little bit to try to get more plastic into that area to get a much cleaner and smoother surface. Well, that wraps up this episode of Slicer Masterclass on using extrusion width to get nicer looking and stronger parts. Hope you enjoyed it. <music>